active now. Hopefully we'll not drop any frames and looks like we're sending data to Facebook and to YouTube. Okay, everybody, hopefully we are live. Let me know if you can see us. It's Az coming to you from his <laughs> from the pink room uh, and Noah, of course. Let's have a look, see and who's in the chat. Oh, yes, I can see. Hello, Ludwig. Hello, Blackwingberg. Hello, Shadow Sun uh, Studio. Hello, Bert. Hello, <laughs> Ritis. Awesome. We have loads of people coming in. Let me get the joint chat up. So we are live on both Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So I'm going to get the restream chat so I can see what everyone is saying. Hello, all. And spam this. Awesome. We got 50 odd people in. Oh, fantastic. See and hear you. Ah, hey, Frank. Hey, here, Jose. How's it going, everybody? Very, very welcome to this very early stream today. Do not worry if you're watching at this time. We will have a stream later as well. We're going to be streaming tonight. We're going to be streaming the battle mode uh, between Josh and Stu. Hello, Jason. Ah, nice to see you, sir. Very, very nice. It's been a while since I caught you on a stream. Hello, Gilliam. So, yes, tonight we're, we're going to be streaming uh, the Ottomans versus the French uh, in a big epic battle mode battle uh, for pride of the uk office and um, hello remy hello kiroshiro hello mads everybody very 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 welcome oh we're rocketing up fantastic so that's later tonight that'll be at 8 p.m uh, central uh a European standard summer time at uh, 6 7 p.m. BST or 2 p.m. sort of Eastern American time but right now uh, as you guys will see on screen already I'm very 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 warmly and very beautifully welcomed by the wonderful Noah hello Noah how are you doing sir <laughs> good how are you I'm very very well I'm very very pink uh, I, I I put Noah on my screen today and I was in all of his amazing office setup which I hope my office will turn into at some point but right now it's focused on being an old girl's room because I've just moved house so you guys are going to have to forgive me here <laughs> Bart says welcome oh, sorry Bert says welcome Noah you're in a good place sir Angie hello oh. to you very very welcome oh over 70 people watching absolutely epic so what are, what are we here oh. to do something a bit different for us really something a bit different for Mythic um, we've built a bit of a loving kind of happy relationship with with Noah and, and the family at Game Trays over the past couple of campaigns anyone that didn't know before uh, we had uh, Game Trays involved with Super Fantasy Brawl and now we're talking about getting Game Trays and Noah involved in Joan of Arc which is a substantially <laughs> more massive project so yes we we kind of wanted to take this opportunity to say hello to everybody chat a bit to Noah introduce you guys to him because he's such he's so integral now to what we kind of see with with time of legends Joan of arc in the future and have a chat to who nor is who game trays are and for any of you out there who don't know who game trays are <coughs> nor could you give us a bit of an overview about what you and, and what you guys do sure absolutely uh, game trays uh, was a company is a company that i started uh, about five or six years ago and i started by looking at board games and saying i like to play board games and they have the worst inserts ever so i'm going out and buying plano boxes <laughs> and coming up with my own things like i'm already buying 15 dollar, 20 dollar plano box it'd be cool if i can design something that would work perfect so after going through a few other iterations and working for a design company that did packaging mm -hmm. i started using their equipment after hours and they let me use them and i designed the first aftermarket game tray for terra mystica at the time wow sold them up sold them on bgg and ever since then that's all i've been doing is designing trays so a few, few years later i got uh, a call from riot games and they wanted to have some trays designed for next versus minions at the oh. time like and so, yeah that, that that was one of my uh, one of my first experiences with game trades was was the the riot games my first minions and just how incredible that was i want to throw that question out to anybody in the chat so anyone on facebook or youtube have you had game trades in any one of your games which game was the first one you had the experience with because mine was mine was with mix versus minions and i was blown away by it but my own that that was a friend's copy my own personal game that i played that absolutely floored me was endeavor edge of seal and having those individual little player areas which you handed out to each person at the start of the game which had mm -hmm. your buildings mm -hmm. in it and your tokens in yeah. it and your 3d player pieces on your track and all of that in a, in a gorgeous gorgeous packaging um so like for me that was outstanding like has there been any kind of standout projects for you and are they all just kind of getting better or is anyone that you remember really fondly yeah, I mean, well, Mex was the, the first and the biggest out of all of them. So it all started from there. And then once that came out, then I started getting more and more calls. And now most of the, now we're in, you know, over 60, over 60 games right now. Yeah. Um, but 
The next was was a good one. Endeavor is definitely a good one as well. Wasteland Express has a ton of trays and it's yes. got cardboard that's about this thick to unpunch. It's a good <laughs> two hour. It's a good two hour process, you know, unpunching everything. And it's but funny it's depending on the, the type of gamer you are. Some people loathe that, but other people relish it. Right? You know, you get two, yeah. two hours of unpunch. I love it personally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do too. That's. Well, I do this, I guess. But yeah, now I got now I got actually the biggest project. Yay! Right <laughs> you can see I unboxed everything and put them into individual trays and line them up by expansion and organize them all. So now I'm going to take it and try to figure out how to store all this stuff. So yeah, and that, that's kind of why we're here today. Obviously, we want to chat a little bit about Joan of Arc. We want to talk about the deluxe storage box that's going to be essentially this extra add-on, this this premium game trays box, which is going to enable you guys at home. If you're a backer of Joan of Arc, whether previous or whether current, you uh, don't worry, Forbel, you can watch this. You can watch this later if you're at work now. <laughs> it'll be it'll be still on Facebook and YouTube. And um, so whether you're a previous backer or whether you're a new backer, you can pick up the deluxe storage box. And we're going to start to talk a little bit about it now. And we'll do an update um, later on before the end of the campaign as well well where we talk a little bit more about this and have it in written form to all the backers but it's worth saying now that Noah is still very much in the development process we are going to show some initial ideas and some renders and some bits and pieces uh, and give you guys an idea of where we're going and um, with, with not just the storage but also the extra bits that are going to make playing your game more fun but before we get there I want to take a moment to stop and go back to the first thing that you did for us Noah because for me personally this this was my first opportunity to see your work kind of firsthand to get a little glimpse behind the scenes and see you working on it and that was super fantasy brawl and i'll kind of show and bring them together into one solution. So I want to know, would you mind showing a little bit of where that's gone and kind of the process you went yeah. through to make that work? Sure, absolutely. So a lot of times it actually started with mechs versus minions where if you've ever seen that tray, there's actually there's a hundred little minions in that game, miniature minion, minions, and there's four sculpts. So the challenge there was to store 100 minis uh, without having to figure out which mini goes in which slot in a hundred different slots. So what I do is I mash up all the minis together and design a supportive cavity uh, that will support any and all of the miniers, minis that go into it. So I took a similar approach to Super Fantasy Brawl and I can show you my screen here. Maybe you guys can see some of the trays oh, we did. Oh yes, look at this. This is so epic. So you can see these trays are all the same, all the blue ones but all the minis in them are different. But you can see that each of them has a specific spot that will keep in place that mini. So you could actually switch any tray and put this mini in this slot. And with this one, we, designed, we decided to do three different universal cavities instead of one for all, since there are a few big ones and a few medium ones and a few small ones. So there's a big cavity here that will support any of the three big ones and then the medium ones and the, the small ones will go here. So it's kind of a mix. It's uh, still have to put it in a certain spot, but uh, it's a little easier. So you can support up to three minis or, or four minis in this case per slot. Yeah. And then at the same time, we have a lid that can go on any of the trays. So you don't have to worry about which lid goes where. Yeah, people in chat are saying that's clever. Black Reaper is saying that's so cool. I must admit, this was, uh, I got to see obviously you working with your software and getting a little glimpse behind the scenes from the first times, and it's amazing just how much detail you go into. And I remember you showed me for the first time yes. when, you, when you brought all the minis together and started to piece out you know, the exact form of each mini and how they would rest inside that plastic and how, mm -hmm. they, how they wouldn't move um, and how 15 minis stacked up together in one spot. Yeah, kind of like you're doing now. This is fantastic. Yeah. You can see how multiple different different minis will sit in that one foreign bit. It's great. 
So yeah, I take all of them, I, I, I call it a mini mashup, and it's just one giant blob basically now. And then I rotate and position each one uh, until it looks right or you know things line up a little bit and the, the mini is still presented forward and looks cool. So like this sword, for instance, will line up with this wing so that it, it kind of uses the same support um, mechanism. And then I, I design the cavity, which is this, around it. Then I just cut out of the tray everything else. Absolutely gorgeous. And I mean, a lot of uh, genius work, a lot of wonderful insight, a lot of people very, very, very happy to have backed sort of fans yeah. all thanks to this, which is great. And Sasha's saying, a uh, very good question, actually, Sasha, you know, how, how will this fare uh, with, with painted minis? And the fact is, I think it will fare really well. I think people who take the time to paint the minis often will go for the likes of foam. And I think foam has its own advantages. You normally are losing some space with foam, but obviously, it, if you're jostling your minis around they're going to be protected mm -hmm. and they're going to absorb that but in this case they're going to sit quite flat so especially if you're keeping your box flat i imagine these are not going to move very much at all yeah this is also this is these are not final either as well so a lot of times and especially in this case the the minis change a lot during the campaign and after the campaign so we've got to account for uh, changing minis changing the sculpts uh, the plastic actually has some shrinkage when it's in there when it's cooled so I have to account for that and then and then uh, after I figure out all that then I can really finalize the cavity yep. and sometimes we even you know use the base depending on the mini to hold things in a little tighter around the base <laughs> it just depends on every special case yeah ab absolutely um, I, I think this is absolutely gorgeous. And to anyone in the chat, we've got like 140 people watching now. Anyone in the chat that did back Sword of Fantasy Brawl on the Kickstarter, this is something that was exclusive to the Kickstarter and it will not be going to retail. This was something done specially for it and it will be part of the core box. So everything comes as you see it in the core box. It's not an additional add-on, differently to what we are going to be talking about in a second with the Joan of Arc campaign. So yeah, this, this was, for me, a real treat uh, to have this be part of the Kickstarter. And I can't wait to, to get my hands on yeah. it, to be honest. Me too. <laughs> so I'll, I'll flick back to a second and kind of have a chat uh, about a, a little bit more about Joan of Arc then and, and kind of come back. So uh, what we're doing with Joan of Arc is we're doing this deluxe storage box. So this is going to be something that's going to be storing all of your components, all of your tiles, all of your cards, everything essentially that is not miniature oriented. So just to make sure everyone understands, because I see there's just some questions going on about that in chat. We are looking at some miniature storage solutions and we are coming up with some ideas. We have, we have some people who are doing some work behind the scenes and we'll definitely share more about that in the future but what we wanted was a way to have a deluxe storage box that would take all of the tiles all of the dice all of the tokens from all the different scenarios across the entire Joan of Arc range so basically everything at all that you could ever get whether it's apocalypse legendary battles unleashed devil village whatever scenario specific plague token tokens routing tokens Genoese uh, Genoese crossbow and tokens all these different things in the game and they were all in one spot really easy for you to find and whether that's your characters or your troops and cards as well whether sleeved or unsleeved we wanted to do it all and as uh, many of you may know in the chat Joan of Arc is, is massive. It is a huge game. You can see it behind Noah, obviously, stacked up as well. Um, so it's no small task. So Noah's been working hard on it, and we're going to continue to share more updates with you all as we go through. But if you pick up uh, the Deluxe Stories box, we're going to start to chat a little bit now about what you can expect. Um, and we've got a, two different things to kind of delve into. So I think, Noah, shall we start chatting about the card box, first of all? Sure. Awesome. Sure, so sure. so we set Noah this really big challenge. <laughs> Not only did we send him everything, but we said, look, initially we want to think about how we're going to break up the cards. You know, obviously tarot, mini, and normal poker size is obvious for your characters, your troops, and then your cards, like your legend cards, your equipment cards, and all those fun things that come up like that as well, and your, your war council and all that stuff as well, your round cards too. And, and start to look at that. And what would that be like if it was something that was contained in its own and really accessible? Um, and I'm so excited for you to show, because I, mm -hmm. I got a teaser of this earlier and it's incredible. I really want to hear where everybody is watching at home is going to think of this. And this is just an initial mm -hmm. an initial prototype to show you guys at home what we're kind of working on. So Noah, let's, let's see it. Sure, okay. So just so you guys know, uh, the cards in here, the decks, the separate uh, amounts and quantities is not uh, actual game quantities. I, I made this before I counted every card in this uh, stack over here. So, <laughs> but it will uh, eventually fit everything perfectly. But you get the you'll get the idea. Um, 
it's a, it, it'll be a box that will swing open. It'll have a window. And then inside, you'll have a tray that will support different size cards, sleeved and unsleeved, by the type. Um, the idea, and if you look at the exploded view, you'll see a tray that will be folded up into thirds and then slat down into the box. Absolutely love it. And it helps to hold everything nice and tightly in place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you can see, let me hide the box here. You can yes. see how it will come together. If I'm going too fast, let me know. No, this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting some ooh shiny, getting some excited reactions in the, in the chat. So as Noah said, yeah, this this at the moment we've currently kind of broken it down as a very rough idea of, of what it's going to be. So you can see the mini the mini uh, poker, then the poker, and then the tarot cards going down. At the moment, those volumes, of course, will change once we start breaking those down into core, into reliquary, and into those various different expansions. And um, at the moment, we're very much in discussion about how to make this work best. We want to obviously mm -hmm. offer you get you guys you know the best way to organize this and the way that makes the most sense to help with your setup time right. and help you and help you get going with it. So it's all very much still in the development stage. At the moment yeah and the, the 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 challenge is to make sure you guys can organize it the way you want to but also help set up and kind of help you figure out a good way to organize it if uh, if it makes sense kind of thing so yeah yeah <laughs> the, 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 the sticker is also you know maybe something we're going to do I'm not sure yet but it's an easy way to uh, label the trays in a nice way um, and, and Brett, yeah, that the question you asked, Brett, is a really good one. So it will hold all the cards from all in. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to say mm -hmm. that it will hold every single card in the game. So the all in the entire Joan of Arc range. If you sleeve them, it'll hold everything for at least a single language. So that'll be all English or all French. If you decide not to sleeve them, because we obviously we gain a lot of space, there's a lot of difference between a sleeved and an unsleeved card, you'll essentially be able to fit in both languages. And you, as you guys will know, our expansions do come with both English and French. So if you are um, of that persuasion, you like to have both languages, you'll be able to do that instead. But um, we do sell sleeves with the Pledge Manager. And we do sell sleeves um, with the game because we do think, obviously, it's best to protect your cards. So Noah's going to make sure that that works for that. Oh, I love seeing in the detail of those those layers. Uh, correct. So the, the, the tray will support either sleeve or unsleeved. And that's one of the reasons I like to do the supports on all the <laughs> sides. So... If you don't sleeve, it, it holds it in a little better. And also, there'll be an additional uh, spacer underneath the tray that will bring the whole tray and the cards up flush with the top of the box. Uh, and then you can remove that if you want to sleeve, which will drop the whole thing down an eighth of an inch, which is about the uh, what you would need to support sleeves correctly at that point. Yeah, and that's an so amazing point. That. I absolutely love that you're giving that consideration to say if you don't sleeve, you've got the space, or if you do sleeve, you can take it out and it'll still fit perfectly against the top of the box. Because someone actually just asked in the chat, Drek was saying, is the window open? Because windows in general uh, maybe don't help with uh, stacking of boxes. But this is actually not an, an open hole. This is actually a plastic, going to be custom engraved display. Isn't that right? Correct. Um, it's, it's a yeah. it's embedded in yeah you know, it'll be clear so you can kind of see in it uh you know it's not final placement or design I, as you can see i didn't finish the whole logo but all this stuff is hand drawn by uh, in my software so it's all engraved in separate thicknesses yeah. and different geometries so it's a uh, it'll be really cool yeah and, and, and then and, the box design obviously is not the final either. I just took the box from the main game. Yeah, we're going to make sure that looks absolutely great and is custom done for these pieces once we kind of get the final card count and the final dimensions sorted. Absolutely. And Meerkat says, engraved window, now you're just showing off. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Frank asks, uh, Noah, is the board, is the, is the box itself, like the physical box there, is it cardboard or plastic? This is cardboard. So yeah. it'll be... A tuck box, or it'll be a cardboard box. Uh, the functionality is not final either. It may be a magnet type box. It may have a, it may have a lid that will come off completely. Uh, not sure yet. 
on that. But cool. this is just one idea. Yeah, gives you an idea of where we're going. Absolutely perfect. And yes, just to answer some of that, I know uh, Cast, uh, Castellella Nash was asking, you know, if you don't have an all-in, will the slots be snug enough to stop the cards moving around? And yet that's exactly what we're going for. We're looking to offer this deluxe storage right. box that will accommodate you, whether you just have a maiden pledge or whether you have something in between with a couple of expansions, or if you have everything, this will be designed to suit everybody. Is that right? Correct. So we haven't decided on how the separators will will be handled, but the idea is that uh, the the card slots will support any of the expansions or lack of expansions, I guess. <laughs> uh, so everything will will still fit and be snug and not flop around. Yep. Perfect. Absolutely love it. Okay, we're going to get on to something new now, guys. This is something that I only saw literally within the last 24 hours myself. Um, Noah's been starting to have a look at what kind of, not just not just storage, but what also kind of game functionality we can start to add in with this deluxe storage box as well, because you're going to need to store your orders, you're going to need to store your wounds, your intrigue, your experience, your legend. You're going to need to store those elements that um, you're going to need not just to pack away nicely, but also to be able to have readily available throughout the game. And Noah's coming up with this great idea. I'm not going to steal your thunder anymore. We've got one of your, mm. again, to be very clear to everybody, one of the first kind of development tests um, that Noah's done so far. And we want to see what you guys all think about it. Yes. Uh, so just as a little insight into the process that I do is, um, you know, by the end of, when, before a tray is sent to production, there's probably, especially on a, a game this size, will be 20, 25 different versions of the tray wow. before it's finalized. Um, so it definitely grows as, as I work on it and as I learn more about the game, especially a game this size, um, obviously I can't play the entire barrage of games <laughs> or scenarios and know how the perfect way to organize it but that's how I, I started and how I normally do is you know the game itself and how it's played how it's stored how it interacts on the table is something that I definitely uh, think about a lot when I'm designing the tray so um, as I work through it and I learn more about it things move and change and items move from tray to tray but this is an initial idea for what I do a lot in a lot of different games uh, as a resource tray where it's something you take out as a lid, you put it on the table, everything has easy access for mm -hmm. items that every player will be reaching and grabbing and putting back during the game, yeah. uh, during the game play. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to talk it up too much, but I, Endeavor Edge of Seal was an example for me where you nailed this, where you had this communal board where you had shops and, and buyable um, items that would go on to each player's dashboard, but had to be a marketplace that not only was easy accessible, but actually sure. you did something incredible with that because it's something that you can pass around the table um, very nicely because nice. the board can get very big, especially with four or five player games. And all of a sudden you've got this moving marketplace which holds everything really nicely. And when you push yeah. down on them, you've created those little little indents that allow the punch board to fold up nicely so you can easily pull things out um, and when you've already been thinking about this with Joan of Arc even with the limited time you've had mm -hmm. with it and seeing where your, your brains are going is, is perfect so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah the uh, that, that actually came from one of my other original designs actually it was one of my original designs or the original design the uh, Terra, Terra Mystica tray there was a two version or two different trays for Terra Mystica. There was a resource tray, similar to the one I'm going to show you, which held items that you would pick up during the game, coins, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was another tray called the Favor Tray. And if any of you have played that game, uh, there is similar to Endeavor Age of Sale, is a set of tiles that everyone gets to choose from during the game. Uh, and normally you'd have to take them out of bags and set up an entire market every time you play the game, which would take you know, five minutes. But uh, it was still kind of annoying, especially if you didn't organize them before you put them back in the box. <laughs> uh, so the other tray was a favor tray, and it had a lid, and it basically organized all those tiles in the right order with a lid. So you just take the lid off and you're playing, and also, like you said, you could pass it around. So of having to get up and yep. walk around the table and go look at the, the favors that you want to pick and then grab it and go back to your seat you can just pass the tray around mm -hmm. so there'll be similar trays like that for for this game as well perfect I mean, yeah we have an idea at least of one to share yeah so here is 
a resource tray idea for uh, Joan of Arc. And right now, it's holding what I knew of being things that would be used a lot during the game in as far as wound tokens, yep. uh, damage tokens, XP, legend, and the structure dice. dice. Yeah, dice as well, yeah. I just, I'll, I'll mention and, and, and orders. a bunch of people are asking questions, so I'm just going to jump in for a quick second, yeah. and you guys can sure. look at this and take this this initial, again, this initial idea from Noah and that we're going to kind of continue to develop. Um, we have a couple of people asking, you know, will the box have a, a spot for terrain tiles? Yes, it will. The deluxe storage mm -hmm. box, that, that card box you, that you've just seen there is only part of the full deluxe storage box. That'll be part that you can actually yes. lift out. That'll be separate that you can then riffle through and pack away the actual... Uh, deluxe storage box will be something much more along the size yes. of the uh, the actual core box itself, much more along the size of something much larger. So that card box is just part of that, just like this element is just part of that. And not only are we talking about one tray like this, but actually mm -hmm. two, mul multiple trays yes. like this. Um, and many people are asking, what about uh, the tiles? The tiles will fit directly into the deluxe storage box. They will have their mm -hmm. own slot separated out, especially for the special tiles for things like the dragon, the apocalypse tiles, the, the river tiles from yeah. the village, the ones that unique to expansions, they'll live inside their own areas of deluxe storage. And a similar question I'm seeing coming up a couple of times there is what about the, the plunder? What about the activation banners that replace the order cubes? Yes. And you've actually started thinking about that a yeah. little, Noah. I can go over like an overall uh, yes. general idea of what the what the overall solution will be um, if you want also. Yes, that would um, be great, yep. And yes, don't forget yes. guys, This we're talking about having mm -hmm. multiple of these trays. So what you're yes. seeing here is just uh, 20 dice, but we're talking about having space for those extra yeah. packs of dice as well. So do not worry, seeing JC and Ludovic saying extra dice spaces, please. Yes, we know it, we know you, you love extra dice. We're definitely getting it in there. Yeah, so this is, um, we're, we're, the idea is, I, which I do a lot in, uh, games that have uh, resource trays is I split up everything into two different uh, groups. Equal trays. So you get two of these and you can then split up the trays, put one on each side of the table so that each side has e easy access to the resources in the game. Love it. Um, so that this is just one, or in this case two, ex identical trays that would be in the solution. In addition, there will be a tray in the bottom that will hold all the hexes and all the other large cardboard pieces. Um, and we're also thinking about doing another tray that will hold all the scenario tokens with its own lid, similar to the favorite tray I was speaking of, where it would have uh, something organized per scenario. Um, so you can just grab all the stuff for the scenario that you're playing and then put it right back in the tray when you're done. And then in addition to that, we're also thinking of a another tray that will hold a, a lot of the terrain cardboard pieces, um, like the houses and the, yeah. the room the room tiles um, and other things that aren't part of the other things I just mentioned. Yeah, you've got the, you've got the, yeah, you've got the gigantic beast boards, you know, you've got the, yes. of course, the battle board itself, you've got the player boards, the, uh, yeah, you've got a lot of different bits of punch board to account for things like the fires as well, yeah. So if you guys look at the uh, image that was uh, the what it could be image on the Kickstarter page of the deluxe box, it is not going to look like that, but it's pretty much going to be that, where it's just a box full of different trays <laughs> that have different stuff organized in a way that makes sense for the game. Um, so right now we're looking at at least four or five different trays. Uh, but like I said, as we as I work on it, things move around and change and then people we we talk to backers and have things like this where mm -hmm. people will be like well i need i would rather put this tile into this tray because it makes more sense and then we'll look at that and then maybe i'll move it uh, if, if that's where it should be um as, as far as the banners go I, I did realize that people will replace these as banners so this this section here might totally change before the, the, the final version, of course. Uh, and then also the size of these um, spots here will also have to be tested to make sure that they fit the correct amount of tokens and everything is easily removed from the uh, each side. As you can see, a lot of times I do 
uh, different angles at the bottom uh, on a few sides, so it can still hold a decent amount of tokens, but then it's easy to pull out tokens from uh, two or three of the sides. Um, so as far as the flags go, unfortunately, the flags are t a very different shape than the cubes. Yeah. So what works good with the cubes, this little ramp slide technique, um, won't, probably won't work for the flag. So I may go back to the drawing board and totally revamp this center area that can so it can support either. Uh, that's another thing that you know. We're definitely going to have to come the design back. process. We're going to have to come body again in another month or so, no, and have another update with you and see what's changed, yeah. and what's worked well, well and what's coming on. Yeah, well, I'll have a whole progression of version one through probably twelve by then. Uh, all the things that have changed. <laughs> but even little things like the the way you've done the ramp for the dice, so you can very kind of ergonomically yes. kind of slide them across, and they naturally come up and out of the tray as you push them right. from left or right. I mean, to me, little touches like that are really going to improve the gameplay experience. Um, you know, we're big on the dice tower, of course, um, from the plunder set, but this is giving you an even more beautiful way. Um, and yeah, everyone in the chat is kind of I think enamored by this, and so. Bruno says he wants to send you his CV. He's liking he's liking the use yes. of your software. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, this is solid works, by the way. If everyone's interested, he recognized it. Yeah, he did indeed. It's solid works. So. So yeah, just so you guys all know, like this, this really is going to be uh, something that's quite large. As 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 exactly as Noah said, there will be multiple different tray elements that are going to live inside the whole deluxe storage box. Some that will live on the table, some that won't need to. And um, so you can expect us to share a bunch of updates as we go through and develop this. And we're still a great many kind of versions away from really finalizing it. And your your input on the comments and your input, like loads of you are getting involved in the, in the comments now and the, the live video is absolutely perfect. It's just what we need to make sure that we give you guys. Some Something that really works well for the game and um, so yeah thank you for showing that Noah it looks I'm super excited like I'm very impressed so far yeah. so I can't wait to see where it's going to get to in the next kind of month or two right so as you can see I have to model up every component in the game uh, in 3D <laughs> in the software and then uh, you know skin it so this particular token here if you look at this one token you know it seems pretty simple but um, you can see how many different versions I had to make. Mm -hmm. So I basically skin all of the different types. Um, here's a different size. Here's a different size with a different... So basically, I'm not even part of, part of the way through, but yep. I still have a lot, of, a lot of tokens to model up still and then figure out where they go. We have, uh, yeah, from our end as well, we have to provide you with a, the, the king you know, king daddy of all spreadsheets, which is going to break yes. it all down for you in some way. So at our side as well, and as, as you guys as backers are going to obviously influence this, we're going to be able to kind of help tell Noah, you know, what makes sense, what characters and what expansions make sense together. And that's something that we're going to kind of work on. So right now the Kickstarter is due to end, you know, in just a little over 24 hours. We're coming down to the last day. So hopefully this is giving you all a bit of a, a, bit of a preview of where it's going to go, but this is still going to be an evolving process. Process, but if you don't know what we do at Mythic Games, if this is your first time being involved in one of our Kickstarters, we do an update every single Wednesday as an absolute minimum where we let you know what's happening with the project and you can be damn sure I'll be bothering Noah again to say, Noah, get up early in the morning <laughs> and come and talk to me and come and talk to the backers because I'm so excited to see where it goes and be uh, in, in a project which is really astronomically large. Um, I know, JC, there's a couple of people asking um, about the flags again. So just to be clear, yeah, we're, Noah's going to start to look at the flags, see how mm -hmm. to incorporate those so you can do the flags or you can do the cubes. Bo both are going to get looked at. Uh, JC is asking um, about the mini stories. So yeah, again, the deluxe storage box will not be focused on the minis at all. Um, we will hopefully share something in a couple of weeks at worst for the minis. We already know, uh, not to name drops from other companies, but there are some companies out there who have done some mini storage solutions as well, but we would like to make sure that we help some companies make some good ones. So we're looking at that too. Won't be the far, far, far future, but we'll have more on that definitely after the campaign. We're not going to be talking about miniature stories too much during it. Um, yeah, so I, this is awesome, Noah. Like, thank you so much for, for showing the ideas behind it. It's, it's been a real, real privilege to get to see what goes on uh, behind sure. the scenes. 
Uh, I, I, if you guys get any questions for Noor before we wrap up, because I know when I first, when I first sat down with him and looked all this stuff, uh, I, I was bubbling with, with energy. If you want to ask Noah anything, guys, let me know what you think. Um, some people are just saying, oh, <laughs> the Kickstarter totals are going up, 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 thanks to this live video. That's awesome. Uh, That's really great. I hope this kind of show, shows people that there is real work and real kind of proper step-by-step -step development going on into this, into this add-on. It wasn't just something we thought about on a whim. It was something that came from back or feedback during our surveys and then now has come from Noah really putting a lot of time into taking this through with us uh, look, oh, uh, more questions about the flag that's fine yes Frank this will definitely replace about 500 to 100 dollars worth of plano boxes I think <laughs> I think that's probably a very fair assessment this this will probably do you very well very impressive yes. Brett is saying Noah thanks for the vindication storage box was that you guys Yep, yep, yep. He's that saying nice. he's saying thank you for that. Uh, Bree, Bree wants to know where the piggies are. Ah, uh, the pigs. Yes, the pet pigs are downstairs right now. So I also did just move recently, and now my office is upstairs. So next time I do a live feed, I'll prepare better for the <gasps> pigs. But I have to carry a hundred pound pig up the stairs. <laughs> now. It's just, Pushing them into the room, <laughs> but Francine, Francine and Stella are sleeping downstairs right now. Francine and Stella, what an amazing pair! That sounds that that that, that is really like characteristic names. Do do their personalities live up to that? Kind of, <laughs> yes, like... absolutely. <laughs> uh, Meerkat saying it's mad to be this excited about a box insert, but this will really have a huge <laughs> impact on getting the game to the table. Wonderful stuff. And uh, a lot of people saying thank you for the information. And Matt's saying there's lots of people waiting for more information in the Deluxe Storage Box. Well, hopefully, if any of you have ever seen any Kickstarters out there with, with game trays before, you realize the quality of the stuff and you realize how happy we are to be able to take so much of Noah's time to work on this. So, boom. Uh, Flesh is asking, not sure if it's been asked already, but the Deluxe Storage Box will only be available at the same time as the Teutonic extension. Um, it's worth saying the Deluxe Storage Box will be available throughout all the Pledge Manager. Um, so you'll still be able to get it after the Kickstarter uh, throughout the Pledge Manager. I don't think we've spoken about if it's going to be available after the Kickstarter. Um, I think we can, we can have com conversations afterwards and see, but definitely the, the Deluxe Storage Box is going to fill... Uh, uh, sorry, is going to fit everything from the entire 1.5 Kickstarter. So everything that came before plus everything new that's been added. So during the Kickstarter or during the Pledge Manager is really the time for you to jump in and get it because that's when it's going to perfectly suit. Uh, Brett says this is great. Stuart says this is great. Awesome. I think everyone just loves you, Noah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. be everyone. But... Yeah, there's probably... No, I, th I think it's everyone. Did you want to Did you want to uh, talk about X-Trays real quick? Oh, Damn, yes. So, uh, yeah, this is, if you guys haven't been paying attention or if you saw on the Facebook post today, tonight at 7 uh, UK time, 8 Central, 2 p.m. Eastern in America, I posted some pictures of Josh and Stu getting ready to play John of Arc tonight. And in those pictures, you might notice we're using the X trays at the minute. And X trays are, well, I'll let you pitch it, Noah, but they're essentially sure. a, a storage system that we're using at the minute while we wait for the Deluxe Storage Box. So we're using it for our John of Arc. We're using it for playing games on the table as well. So, yeah, you can tell us about X trays. Be great. Oh yeah, sure. So uh, X trays are a line of uh, small, basically plano boxes, but designed for games that will interlock together. Um, and they're available for pre-order now on the website and also the Board Game Geek uh, store. Uh, and there's four different types, so it would be a way to uh, store any game uh, and that you have and organize it in different uh, ways. So. The X trays look like this. This would be a single one. Yeah. They all have the same lid, similar to the uh, Super Fantasy Brawl idea, where one lid fits on all the trays, and then you have a single tray like this. You've got the same version with doubles, so two yeah. cavities. Uh, you'll also have a double offset, which will have one big side and one small side, and then a triple. This is great. And they all use the same lid idea. And they all stack in the game box like that. So, nice and snugly, nice and tight as well. Right. So people use them, keep them in the game, um, store them, and also put it on the table. Uh, and we are trying to figure out how many, as you can see, I've used probably 40 or so uh, to store all the, the stuff currently separated by expansion. And it would be a way for you guys who currently have the game to help store your game 
until the deluxe version comes out, and then you can use those x-rays and other games that you've got yeah and this this is great we're absolutely loving it at the minute because we we use them we use the single ones for the dice we use the double ones to separate out the uh, the intrigue and the experience and the legend and the wound of things that we're using regularly so we we when we set up the game now we normally have nine x-rays and um, alongside the table which makes it super super easy and we're, we're loving them and the fact that yeah as you mentioned we can get we can use them now but once the deluxe solution is out we can just move them on and use them in something else the universal is is really great yep. um a couple of people saying that looks really cool really like really liking that stuff um i guess Stu saying game trays muller rice edition that is that a is do we have muller rice or muller yogurt in america is that a very british joke uh no <laughs> he's basically saying game trays yogurt <laughs> edition uh because they, they look kind of like oh, yes. <laughs> very stylish versions of some british yeah, company yogurt exactly yeah this actually <laughs> You're right. This one does. It looks. That's like it. That's it. The quarters. They have like a little uh, granola over here. Oh then... my word! We need to do that. That's a social media event waiting to happen. No. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've got you know like two thousand of these here, so I use them for everything. Um, <laughs> nuts and bolts, and my garage are all organized in these. Um, <laughs> someone posted a picture on Twitter of you know using it to store their leftover macaroni and cheese. So yeah, and actually, there's a question from Andreas Noah: Is there any chance you're going to be at Spiel in Essen this year? I am not, uh, but Board Game Geek will be there, and if you go there, you can see um, the uh, uh, most of the aftermarket trays that uh, that we offer on the website there. Nice. Uh, so like the terraforming, we make a tray for terraforming Mars, player mat, a replacement for terraforming Mars. Uh, you can see those, uh, small world trays, um, euphoria trays. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Perfect, perfect. Um, as a couple of questions, just back to the, the deluxe storage box for a second. I'll kind of just answer sure. quickly. So Frank was saying, will the standard game boxes shipped have generic plastic insert trays holding all the minis? So at the minute, Frank, um, the way we're looking at shipping, we have one. Oh, sorry, we have one point five. Will be the same as one point oh when it comes to the mini. So yes, it will be the plastic uh, injection molding you know, basic trays inside the brown boxes inside the larger, obviously presentation box. So yeah, that's that's what we're talking about. Nothing, nothing much changed. And um, there was also a uh, festival. JPS was saying, have you a view of all trains? Uh, excuse me, all trays that are arranged in the storage box to see if the access of different tiles is easier. Not so festival. That's something we'll share in the future. So keep an eye on the Kickstarter updates. We will regularly put new information out there and on our facebook page of course about what noah's doing and the development he's doing at the moment we're still in that early stages so we don't have a full view of how every tray is going to look inside the storage box just yet but we will and we'll definitely definitely share that um and yes another good question again from festival said are will each tray be dedicated to one expansion or should we mix expansion cards and tokens and that will be specific and um, in a couple of ways to you and then also to us so what we'll do is we'll make sure the tiles are broken down in a way that makes sense by expansion so separate different areas for those the cards however will make sure that any cards that are specific to expansion are set in their area and easy to find but if there's any cards that are used across multiple things we'll make sure they kind of have their area as well but we're looking at making an option that's going to be flexible for you so again sleeved on sleeves or whether you want to store it by expansion specifically or whether you want to divide it slightly differently we're kind of exploring some different options right now but you can be sure that if you want to find a specific siege scenario or a specific legendary battle scenario we'll have it broken down both token wise and tile wise that you can go straight in and get what you're after that's the whole the whole purpose of the box is like really focused on on that um, enhancement of your game um mm -hmm. game asked uh, will the storage box be shipped at the same time as the already existing extensions like siege or apocalypse and um, so it's very likely Gillian, that we ship everything together and um, we're, we're, we're looking at doing one wave so a single wave of shipping for for everything in joan of arc so yes in an ideal world we'd like to bring that all together at the same time we haven't quite started talking about those logistics just yet and um, but yes the idea is that they'll arrive either all as one package or very close together so we'll, we'll kind of work that out uh, in the coming months um andrea says thanks matt says it was so cool to see this thank you so much he's shooting off uh, a bunch of people saying thank you <laughs> and a general very positivity positive feeling for what you're doing and i think an oh. eagerness an eagerness to see more which is exactly what i have as well so i can completely understand that <laughs> cool well look thank you Noah. Yep, if, if anyone if anyone has solid works experience and you know wants to make some trays give me a call wow there, there you go there's, <laughs> there's an opening if ever you heard one so if you've worked on solid works and you like what noah's doing and you want to make some trays wow i think you might get a few cvs coming <laughs> coming your way and i know there's there's a few people in the chat that were really, <laughs> really looking for it 
Cool. Okay. Well, look, I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Thank you so, so, so much. In just over two hours, we're going to be live again with the Ottomans versus the French in a 2500 point battle mode game between Josh and Stu, the ultimate kind of uh, try hard battle of pride for the UK office. So be there. I'll be there in, on the comments chatting with you all. And Noah, thank you again. I'm going to sign off and say goodbye, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.